Hey everyone, Alexandra here. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite games from the last match in the Women's Speed Chess Championship. This match was played between Grand Master Alina Danielian from Armenia and Grand Master Katerina Lagno from Russia. Both players were really strong. Alina was a six times Armenian female chess champion. She also beat out all the competition, including yours truly, in the qualifier to get her spot in the championship. Katarina, on the other hand, is the reigning women's blitz champion. She was also 200 points higher rated than Alina and had plus four from their latest head-to-head -head over the board. Somehow, Alina managed to win the match by just one point. It was very close, both ladies fought very hard, but today we're going to be looking at one of the games where Alina won. It's a very nice attacking game. I hope you guys will all enjoy it. So in this position, Alina was white and Katarina was black. Alina played d4, knight f6, and here she played bishop g5, which is a less common opening after playing the queen pawn forward, it's a lot more aggressive. The idea is to trade off your bishop pair in exchange for giving black a bad pawn structure here with the double pawns. I actually think this type of opening decision was smart on Alina's side because she doesn't play it normally, but it is a lot harder to defend in rapid games as we will see what happened here. She continued with e3, preparing to develop the bishop and preparing the c4 pawn push. c5, knight f3, knight c6, c4, c takes d4, e takes d4, and e6. Black here had to protect the pawn on d5 because after c takes d5, she wouldn't want to take back with the pawn in the center there. Alina responded by putting yet more pressure on that center pawn. Queen b6, putting pressure on b2, to which Alina replied with queen d2, protecting the pawn here. Black played d takes c4 here, which might surprise some people because usually black would wait to make a move like this until white's already moved her bishop so that she has to move her bishop twice and she loses the tempo. But she didn't really have that many choices in this position um, because after c takes d5, Black would be forced to take with the e-pawn, which is why she pushed e6 to begin with, but then her king is stuck in the center and she's behind on development. She hasn't moved either of her two bishops here. So d takes c4, bishop takes c4. Here I'll pause for a second just to take a look at how the kings are doing. Black's king is obviously a lot weaker because there's a missing pawn on g7, so it'd be hard for black to castle king side, but also queen side because of the open c file and soon to be open d file if that were to happen. The black king also can't just comfortably stay in the center because d5 is coming, white is ready to open up black's position here. At the same time, white also has a little bit of trouble. If white castles king side, then black has ideas like rook g8. I think Katarina slightly misplayed the rest of the game here and ended up getting her king in trouble because of one of these decisions. So hopefully we can learn from her. And again, she's still an incredible player. She played a6 here, which I think loses a tempo because it's not stopping anything. Knight b5 wasn't a threat that was actually going to do something. Instead, what I think she should have played was bishop d7. The idea being that black is developing her pieces, and if white were to castle, she can castle queenside and get her rook ready to attack on the g-file. And of course, the rook on d8 is also ready to team up against white's king here. But okay, she played a6, not the decisive move in the game. Alina continued by castling here. She is bringing her king to safety and also preparing to activate her two rooks. Katarina played bishop g7. She had to develop her bishop somehow, to which Alina immediately pushed d5, ready to open up the center and pressuring black into castling much sooner here. She played knight a5, attacking the bishop on c4, to which white replied bishop d3. It's the only good move. 
and or it's the best move and now white's bishop is looking towards where black's king is going to castle if i were the black king i would be pretty uncomfortable but then again it's the best of the worst options in a position like this we can already tell that white has an advantage and it looks like white will have a very promising attack but what she did now i found very wise rook fe1 bringing more pieces to the party, preparing a rook lift to go on either the g-file or the h-file, and she could also continue it with rook e3. Bishop d7, have to develop the bishop somehow here. And in this position, when I saw it, um, I saw rook a d1, and I really liked it because it was putting more pressure on the d-file and also getting the rook away from the long bishop diagonal. I thought that rook e4 could have been played as well. It seemed a little bit faster, but at the same time, there's no way black can stop it. Um, a move like f5 here would allow for knight e5, and then after knight e5 is played, the rook can come to e3 and g3. So white can get the rook onto the g or h file regardless. I like that she spent the time to bring all of the pieces on the best position possible. Black continued with rook ad8. She was trying to do the same thing, activate her pieces. Unfortunately, she had a lot less squares and promising plans in this position. White was able to play rook e4, preparing to get the rook onto the attack, to which Black replied with f5, opening up the bishop and also taking control of the g4 square so that at least Alina can't play rook g4 and then something like queen h6 here. Rook h4, e takes d5. White's, black still has a really bad pawn structure here, and she's mostly making force moves at this point. Knight takes d5, queen c5, and here white played a move that looks good at first, but is actually way more crushing than you can ever imagine. Knight f4. This was a beautiful move, because it has two very scary threats. The first is b4, pinning the knight and the queen, and the second is knight h5, at which we'll take a look at a little bit later. In this position, Katarina had about 30 or 20 seconds, so she had to move very quickly. I am guessing that she saw that knight h5 was coming and figured that she would lose that position, so she wanted to create some type of counterplay. She played bishop b5, trying to take advantage of the fact that the bishop is pinned. Um, unfortunately, not only was the knight hanging or b4 hanging, but the bishop on the d-square is protected three times. It's only attacked twice, so white is not in any risk here and just ended up winning a piece. I'll show the end of the line after we look at why knight h5 was so scary. So say that Katarina had continued with knight c6 here. She's trying to get out of the pin to save her piece. The reason why f4, the knight on f4 is so powerful is because now it can jump to h5, looking towards the bishop on g7. If it was white's turn to move here, white would play queen g5. That's the immediate threat, trying to checkmate black as fast as possible. It's pretty difficult for black to defend this. Um, if, he if she would have moved h6, then white could have taken the bishop on g7, king takes, and checkmate would be coming very soon. If instead white tried to block queen g5 with f6, well, the same idea comes with knight takes g7 and queen h6. Very scary plans here. So another option black could have tried is queen d6 with the idea of blocking the threat with queen g6. This line was the most complicated and I'm sure if Katarina had more time on her clock, she would have tried to go into this line. Nevertheless, it's still better for white. And I'm just going to play on this variation. It's a computer line to illustrate how dangerous this attack is. Knight takes g7, king takes g7, queen c3 check, um, which is basically preparing to put pressure on the queen with the rook here and also encouraging black to play f6. After f6 is played, the idea is that white wants to get the queen onto e3 and onto h6, now that the queen is no longer protecting that square. Um, so white continues with bishop c2, attacking the queen with the rook, 
The queen is trying to run away from the rook, but you know, I'm sorry. Rookie one attacks the queen again. The queen finally gets some breathing space and then white plays queen e3, preparing to play queen h6. Um, and at, at this position, th at this point, things are looking very bad for black. Keep in mind that if the king ever tries to get to f7, we also have bishop b3. Looks like a pretty scary attack. I can understand why Katarina played bishop b5. I'll go through the rest of the game here where Alina was able to enter an endgame where she was up a minor piece, traded everything off and simplified. g4, really nice move, making space for the king here. Katarina still tried with rook d1, but she, she's down a minor piece here, so not much to, to do here. I think she actually ended up flagging this game and here it says game may have continued. Oh, sorry, those are computer. The position ended here on rook b5 where Alina was up two pawns. No, one pawn and a knight. Definitely an easy end game to finish off. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I'm going to be watching the future women's speed chess championship matches. I'm really looking forward to seeing more exciting chess. I will bring one of my favorite highlights from the next match in the future. If you enjoyed this, make sure to check out chess.com on Twitch. I also have my own Twitch channel. And looking forward to seeing you guys in the future. Bye.